Hey there, folks. Welcome to Stormwind Studios Succinct Held Online Remote Training Sessions, or as we like to call them, shorts. Trust me, I keep asking them to get rid of the acronym, but they won't get rid of the acronym. Anyways, this is the fifth short in the Wireless LAN Essentials series of shorts, focusing on some basic wireless LAN design considerations. As far as our main topics of discussion are concerned, we're going to briefly talk about virtual local area networks or VLANs, quality of service or QoS, and then the Cisco compatible extensions, otherwise known as CCX. Now on the topic of discussion when it comes to VLANs, VLANs are used to logically separate traffic on wired networks. And in fact, they work in a similar fashion on wireless networks. Now, although there's no such thing as a wireless VLAN, I'm going to use that term to simplify this topic. The reason for that is because if you remember from an earlier short, we used the term wireless LAN to describe all of the configurations of a wireless network, including the wireless network's name. We tend to think of them in its singular form, but we need to recognize that just like a switch can create multiple VLANs, wireless controllers can create multiple wireless LANs. Each of these wireless LANs are going to have their own SSID, their own correlation to a VLAN on the wired network, security settings, quality of service settings, whatever it may be. So if you think about it, in many ways, a wireless LAN is kind of like a wireless VLAN. Now, we have to factor in a couple of things when it comes to VLANs and our wireless networks. As far as the router requirements are concerned, controllers have the ability to extend the VLANs out to their access points, but we still need a router to do the routing among the VLANs. Most VLANs are going to be segmented into different subnets and simply put, the controller doesn't have those routing capabilities. So don't make the mistake of thinking, oh, I have a controller, I can get rid of my router. You still need a router to route among the VLANs. Now VLAN assignment, since the wireless LAN is where the VLAN and once again to kind of use the Dr. Evil finger quotes, the wireless VLAN connect, client association determines the VLAN assignment. So there are ultimately two different ways to get the client onto the right VLAN. The controller has a VLAN that gets connected to a particular wireless LAN, AKA our wireless VLAN. Now the AAA services have the ability to take that client and put them in the right VLAN based upon their identification. Now to use the AAA method, you basically click the appropriate setting in the controller GUI and then the AAA server handles the rest. This client is identified as Jim Bob. Jim Bob belongs to VLAN 1. Let's put Jim Bob in VLAN 1. Now for the controller method, we have to look at the diagram that my big old giant head is blocking. Let's say that we have VLAN 10 that is connected to the wireless LAN advertising the SSID of red. VLAN 30 is connected to the wireless LAN advertising SSID green. Now, when a client associates to a particular SSID, they are also connecting to that particular VLAN. In many ways, the controller method is a lot simpler to implement, but it's not as scalable as relying upon the AAA method. Basically, for the green clients, they connect to the green SSID, which would put them in VLAN 30. But what happens when a red client attempts to connect to the green one and the green one attempts to connect to the red? Your phone starts ringing off the hook. Hey, I can't get to any of my stuff. Well, you didn't connect to the right wireless LAN. Anytime we can make it easier for our users, we definitely want to take advantage of that. The next thing to factor in when it comes to VLANs is going to be the LAN segmentation. VLANs on the wired side are almost a no-brainer. It's one of those things where you're like, of course we have VLANs. Why would we not have VLANs? They improve efficiency, bandwidth, security, etc. Now we get the same benefits on the wireless side because once again, a wireless LAN is basically a wireless VLAN. Now I mentioned that the wireless LANs work in a similar fashion to VLANs, 
But let me clarify something because I know when I start reading the comments, ah, it's not the same thing as a VLAN. Similar does not mean the same as same. It's similar, it's not the same. Now on the wired side, you can pretty much create however many VLANs you want to because those devices will be physically connected to that VLAN the same way every day, every week, every month, every year. Now on the wireless side, clients have the ability to pick up their stuff and start roaming among the access points and roaming among the controllers. So a single piece of VLAN traffic would need to be broadcasted out across multiple access points. It's basically sending the same copy of information times however many access points you have. Now, that client could be connected at anywhere on the wireless LAN. They can be on access point one, access point two, in the middle of roaming from access point one to access point two or access point three to access point four. So because we don't really have a set seating arrangement, if you will, we can't create as many VLANs as we have wireless LANs and vice versa because that same traffic is gonna be multiplied and multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. That falls into the too much of a good thing. On the wired side, Create however many VLANs you want to. On the wireless side, you have to be a little bit more strategic in that regard. Now, there are some ways to circumvent that, but for now, just factor it into your overall design considerations. The next thing to get into is going to be QoS. The short version of QoS is that it manages network resources to achieve the desired or required network performance. In the good old days, we were just happy as clams to get our wireless devices connected wirelessly. Nowadays, we expect to have wired performance on a wireless network because we're spoiled. Now you have two ways to configure QoS on your wireless LAN controller. You can use something that they call the metal profiles, which essentially use a fixed priority value for all traffic within a wireless LAN kind of think of like the bronze metal, the silver metal, the gold metal. You can also use what's called alloy QoS, another metal reference. Uh, they define the three priority values within the wireless LAN for maximum, unicast default, and multicast default. So those four metal wireless LAN QoS profiles are bronze, otherwise known as background, gold for video applications, platinum for voice applications, silver for best effort. Now remember that all traffic in a particular wireless LAN would receive the same service level depending upon the metal level that's been assigned to it. Now the alloy QoS defines service levels for three types of traffic. Rather than lumping all of the traffic together, it has the ability to designate a certain service level based upon the traffic itself. So there's things like wireless LAN max priority, unicast default, multicast default. As administrators, we can configure each of those priority levels within a profile ranging from low or zero to high or six. Now, an important thing to remember is that even though we have QoS in a wireless network, no matter what we do, wireless communication is still different than wired communication. Wireless is always half duplex. It always has fewer communication pathways or channels, and it is more prone to latency and jitter. Additionally, we have to factor in the additional data tunnel between a controller and its access points. QoS is achievable by adding tags or markings to every single packet's header. QoS on wireless to wireless or wired to wired is fairly straightforward. But anytime you have QoS between the two, going from wireless to wired or wired to wireless, it requires more work on the behalf of the controller. Now the controllers do have the ability to maintain QoS by copying the QoS settings into the CAPWAP headers before sending it down to the access point. Now 802.11e, which is a specification we talked about in an earlier short, amended the standard with QoS eight priority levels. Basically, that was too complicated, so Wi-Fi Multimedia, or WMM, taking myself off here for a second so you can see that, 
WMM simplified it from eight to four access categories, basically voice, video, best effort, and background. Now, instead of blanket coverage from the metals or the alloys, WMM prioritized bases based upon the application's requirements. So I know I said a mouthful. So the best way I can kind of summarize all this is QoS profiles create blanket settings for all traffic in a wireless LAN, regardless of the packet's contents. Alloy QoS adds a little bit more granularity by recognizing three types of traffic for QoS. WMM adds even more granularity, but the problem with WMM is not every wireless device is capable of supporting it. So really the alloy is kind of the middle ground. WMM is the best, but with limitations. QoS profiles, they kind of do what they do, but it's not very specific. Finally, we have CCX. We throw this into the mix because in many ways, CCX needs to be factored into your wireless LAN design. This program delivers advanced network capabilities into third-party wireless LAN client devices. Kind of similar to how the Wi-Fi Alliance certifies a particular product as 802.11n or 802.11ac, etc., etc. The main goals of CCX are to deliver a coordinated, enriched wireless infrastructure solution by disclosing technical operation to third parties. Basically, CCX allows third party vendors to get a peek at what Cisco does on a daily basis. Not everybody else gets to do that. Now, they test and validate the third party client cap uh, compatibility and branding products as Cisco certified further Cisco's company mission of worldwide domination. It's kind of like, hey, this has our stamp of approval. We want everybody to use Cisco because we're Cisco. Now, to give you some examples of where CCX comes into play, in 2005 to 2006, somewhere in that time frame, WA, WPA support uh, was basically was required on the equipment in order to be certified by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Now, the WPA2 support was optional until 2006. Basically, Cisco stepped in as part of their CCX program and made the WPA2 support mandatory well ahead of the Wi-Fi Alliance's deadline. Another example would be management frames. Management frames are used to advertise a wireless LAN and its capabilities but they can be tampered with as part of some form of a network attack. So Cisco created something called the Management Frame Protection or MFP that adds a Message Integrity Check or MIC to every management frame. CCX version five enabled vendors to certify their products for MFP support. Now the CCX licensees are gonna be found in what's called the CDN, otherwise known as the Cisco Development Network. So as far as the evolution and key features of CCX are concerned, we've briefly summarized their key items here in this table. Basically the way that it boils down to, each version of CCX adds to or improves the capabilities of the previous version. Now, based upon this recording, version 5 is currently the most recent version with a number of improvements that are more laptop focused. Basically, as laptops became bigger and beefier, we were able to take advantage of more of that big bigness and beefiness, if you will. Version 6 or CCX Lite is technically a subset of version 5. It was actually requested by third parties to create a more modular approach to the testing process. The features would be certified based upon their relevance to a particular device. So there would be features that are laptop specific, features that are smartphone specific, features that are tablet specific, et cetera, et cetera. It really simplified uh, the work that vendors had to do. So that's all we have here for our Stormwind Studios succinct held online remote training sessions. Thanks for watching our short on wireless LAN essentials. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to be notified of our new shorts, which should be coming shortly. Take care.